It's my feel good breakfast show. A very good morning to you and welcome back to your feel good breakfast show express on SABC3 Monday morning which means it's all uh, it's time for us to talk about relationships and of course we're reaching the start of November and in South Africa this marks Disability Rights Awareness Month. Now as Expresso is determined to get you thinking and talking about the important stuff this morning our relationship expert Dr. Eve is joining us to discuss what is involved in being in a relationship with a uh, partner who lives with a disability. That's right. What are the things that you need to consider when entering a relationship with a differently abled person or perhaps you're dealing with adjusting to your partner acquiring a disability during your relationship. If you have any questions or comments regarding this, Dr. Eve is here to engage with you, so please do feel free to give us a call on 021-430-9881. Good yeah. morning, Dr. Hello. Eve. As always, a pleasure to have you. Always. That's so nice. I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You make me feel so special. All right, Dr. Eve, let's get straight into it. Yes. I think the, the first instance you, you heard to me talking about uh, somebody with a disability and then right. Deanne referring to a differently abled person. What is yeah. the correct non-offensive terminology to use when you're getting uh, engaged in this discourse? You know, I don't think that any of us are really equipped to decide on that because we have the privilege not to be physically disabled. I think mm -hmm. every single person has a disability cat, whether you can see it or you can't. Yeah. But I think uh, well, the way I like to work is mm -hmm. that I like to ask people who I will encounter in my therapy room or in any other forum, how would you like to be referred to? And mm -hmm. it's really up to them to self-identify how they want to. In the literature and in research, we do talk about it as being differently abled mm -hmm. because we know this is a group of people who are extre extremely marginalized. Mm -hmm. And so they have to find a way to educate us about what feels for them less stigmatizing less shameful, less shaming, less embarrassing. I mean, it even seems so stupid to have to say that, yeah. right? That yeah. you're stigmatized because of something that has Absolutely. happened to you. But that is the primary emotion that people who are differently abled mm -hmm. feel. Yeah. Incredible shame and and stigma. Yeah, yeah, talking about stigma and something that's probably one of the biggest challenges for people that are dif differently abled is yeah. access to spaces. Oh. I think for us who oh. do have the ability to go wherever we want, we don't totally. realize how difficult it is to access different areas. What should we really be thinking about when uh, it comes to creating an opportunity for people who are differently able to get around? This is such an important thing, and this is the number one topic. You're absolutely right. I don't know why I'm losing my voice. I think I'm very emotional about this topic, yeah. so forgive me for that. Okay. Um, when, when I work with people who are differently able, they talk a lot about access. We don't, as you said, we don't think about it. Why? But think about not being able to get into places because the corridors are too narrow, because mm. there are steps, because you can't get transport or public transport or even into your own transport for yourself. Think of the consequences of that to you. Yeah. You become socially isolated, which means that you have a higher chance of becoming depressed, anxious, and less ability to meet people yeah. mm. and to socialize with people. If you look at who is becoming disabled, who becomes disabled, it is young men. That's your highest cohort of people who become disabled mm. if you're not born that way. And why is it? Because young men take more risks than what young women do and that what older people do. Mm. So you've got people between the ages of 18 and about 25, 30, who have a much higher risk of becoming disabled. And at that time, you're wanting to be meeting people, to be going out, and how do people meet people? It's through socializing. Sure. So suddenly you don't have access just because of stairs or really concrete, tangible things that are in your way to meeting people. Yeah, all right, so obviously there's a lot for us to talk about yeah. and uh, things to consider when entering a relationship with a differently abled person, yeah. or perhaps you are dealing with adjusting to your partner acquiring a disability during your relationship, please feel free to give us a call at number 021-430-9881. We are standing by to take your questions and comments. It's my feel good breakfast show. Our relationship expert Dr. Eve is in the building and we're discussing what's involved in being in a, in a relationship with a partner who lives with a disability ahead of the start of National Disability Rights Awareness Month this Friday the 3rd of November. Now she's here to engage with your questions and your mm -hmm. comments so please do feel free to give us a call on 021-430-9881. Yeah and first up uh, Dr. Eve maybe just take us through the kinds of adjustments and considerations yeah. that one might have to think about when you are in a relationship with a differently able person for instance at home is that you know oh, what, what do you need to think cat. about there yeah um, 
the, the biggest thing that impacts on a relationship dynamic is that if somebody becomes suddenly differently able through illness or through an accident that's mm -hmm. happened, there is something called role reversal that happens. So it might be that you would you become the caretaking person in that relationship out of necessity. If you were somebody who was working all day, you may now have to be the one who is organizing care or actually physically care, taking care of this person. Mm -hmm. And that makes the person who is differently able very uncomfortable, it can be, because you are now dependent on this person and you're supposed to be this lover, this equal relationship, contributing as well. So there's a huge difference that happens there. And mm -hmm. How do you normalize that relationship where both people can feel I'm equally contributing, I'm equally being able to make a relationship still be intimate? because there is still the intimacy part of it, because this is part of the myth mm -hmm. of being differently able. You know, you become asexual, and it's mm -hmm. not true. You still want to be sexual, and there are many ways still to be sexual, whatever your disability is, mm -hmm. but there is this belief. So your partner may be also feeding into that stereotype and no longer seeing you as a lover, but somebody who they care about very compassionately and deeply, mm -hmm. and you lose, lose that intimacy which is you know, incredibly sad and tragic for people. And because healthcare providers don't talk about it, because media don't, which is why I'm so thrilled we are talking about it today, yeah. and realizing that of course there is still a possibility to be intimate and still have relationships in your own way. It doesn't have to be this regular heteronormative model of what sexuality is or what relationships are, mm -hmm. but it stops people from meeting people and engaging in an intimate relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we, 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 we've discussed the physical limitations right. and we have to acknowledge that this is very real for so many people out there. Very but what much. about the mental and emotional oh, part goodness. as well? How, mm. does, how do you deal with that? How do you even begin to tackle that issue? Right, I mean, how do you re -envis envisage yourself, Leanne? Yeah. How do you see yourself from somebody who was independent, had freedom, could make decisions on your own? If you wanted to just get up and go to the car, you could do that and take a drive or get on a bus. And suddenly all of those, not even rights, those just regular routine Freedoms, stuff that we take, yeah. we take for granted is removed from you. Mm -hmm. And the agony, the mental anguish is around losing independence. So for example, when I do an assessment of somebody for a medical legal, um, pra for my, in my medical legal practice, one of the most painful experiences that people say is that I've lost my independence, mm -hmm. I don't have mobility. So I can't even reach for a pot. I can't even cook a meal. You know, simple mm. things that we take for granted. Mm. And that affects your mental well-being. I become depressed. I become really withdrawn. I feel so badly about myself. My self-esteem lowers. And then it's very difficult to connect and have an intimate relationship with somebody else yeah. when you're feeling so disabled disadvantaged in your own self. Yeah. Mentally, it takes a terrible toll. All right, well, we're going to pick up the conversation yes. after a very short break where you can still give us a call on 0214309881 to ask your questions or give us your comments on this very, very important issue. We'll be right back after this. It's my feel-good breakfast show. A very warm welcome back to your feel-good breakfast. And our relationship expert, Dr. Eve, is here. And we're discussing something very, very important. We're talking about right. relationships uh, and, of course, with a partner that is differently abled, especially uh, ahead of the National Disability Rights Awareness Month, which is November, uh, this Friday coming. Uh, we're going to be talking about that even more. But right now, it's, it's all about that. And we were talking about just the different kinds of considerations. And, of course, if you ha have something to offer to this conversation, comments or questions, yeah, give us a call too. on 0214309881. Exactly. Dr. Eve, let's talk about, you know, a disability that was acquired during a relationship or even a mental uh, challenge, yes. you know, as a, re as a yes. result of an accident. Yes. There's a lot that goes into being there for that person, being mm -hmm. present for that oh. person in every aspect. Mm -hmm. What does the other partner have to take into consideration? Right. Um, so I like that you're referring to something that happened later on in life because yeah. there is a high degree, unfortunately, of accidents that happen that cause traumatic brain injury, Leanne. So on the outside, the person may look physically fine without any disability, but there has been brain injury that has happened. And depending on where the injury has happened, it can affect the ability to connect and the ability to be present with somebody in a relationship. So it feels as if you've lost your partner because your partner is no longer the same person. There may be a personality change that has happened. Mm. This person is distant and unable to connect and unable to relate to you. And how do you as a person manage that? Yeah. So we know that there is a huge 
increasing divorce amongst people who are disabled, who become differently abled during the span of a relationship. The partner just can't tolerate it. Yeah, Let's go ahead, take a call right now, shall we? Uh, Christine from Mitchell's Plain. Good morning, Christine. Christina. Good morning. Thank you so much for your call. What is your comment or question? Yes, my comment is my husband had two strokes, <clears throat> but I never excluded him. Mm -hmm. I always included my husband. Wherever I go, I took him with, and even in the bed, I never excluded him. He couldn't do nothing for himself mm -hmm. at that moment in time. But you know what? I let him feel. Mm -hmm. I let him feel. He is still my husband. Oh. I just turned the table, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. Christina, thank you so, so much for, yeah. for sharing your story with us. And I guess, too, that the question then is how important is it to, to try, especially when it's something that happens during the relationship yeah. where something suddenly changes, to keep things as, as you know, going as normally Normal as possible, as possible yeah. and to not make that, that adjustment where you make yeah. your partner feel like, I can see that you are differently abled now or I right. feel it. How important is that? It's, it's vitally important and if you can define somebody as Christina beautifully showed us, not through their disability but through themselves still as seeing them as yes. a person, that is the gift that you give to somebody who is either born with a disability or finds themselves suddenly differently abled. Mm -hmm. Just to recognize they are still the same person. Mm -hmm. That is the cry that comes from people who are differently abled. I'm still the same person. This disability is something which do not be distracted by. So I'm also letting people know, and, and this I think I really want to say comes from the many dis differently abled people that I work with. Please do not ask when you meet me, what happened to you? Why are you in a wheelchair? What made you blind? Mm -hmm. Don't let that be the introduction to me meeting you and defining who I am. Get to know me as a person, mm -hmm. and I will tell you when I feel I'm ready to, what has happened to me. That is the most important and honoring thing to be able to do, because this person is still the same person, just looking different and abled differently yeah. in a physical sense. Right. That would really be my appeal. That's mm -hmm. powerful. Thank you so much, Dr. Eve. We've got one last thought from Nico in Clarksdorp. Good morning, Nico. What would you like to share with us this morning? Morning, Leanne. Uh, yeah, uh, I just wanted to... Uh, my wife lost her leg on the age of 59. And uh, she, uh, she still feels that she's not uh, the same person anymore. She can't do what she normally do. Mm -hmm. I just uh, help her wherever I can with everything and with love. Wow. So we can get through it. Thank you so much, Nico. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank I you for Nico, sharing that with that us. I hope, Nico, that you're getting support for yourself as well because this is something which isn't spoken about, how the yeah. caretaker needs to have support. Mm when you are, are, are the person who is supporting, mm. you really, really need to have a lot of support because all the attention is focused focus on the differently abled person and not on the caretaker, but the caretaker needs enormous Absolutely. amount of emotional mm -hmm. and physical support as well. 100%. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much for your insights, Dr. Thank Even. You. Thank it's you every, it's also to everyone who, who yes. called in because we know that everyone in the world is deserving of love. So this National Disability Rights Awareness Month coming up in November, let's all spare consideration for these yes. people um, and of course all the love ones in their lives as well because like you just said now yeah. Dr. Eve they also need that love and support. 100%.